This is Field Sports Channel News. Basque says a new consultation on firearms licensing is the most important in 35 years. The Minister for Crime and Policing, Chris Philp, launched an eight-week consultation on the 29th of June 2023. Basque is urging shooters to respond. It welcomes many of the proposals announced by the Minister, including mandatory involvement of GPs and the review of the length of a certificate. It welcomes the Minister's rejection of putting shotguns on firearms certificates. However, it has concerns about several other areas of the consultation. It's a suggestion that the police are given more powers to come into people's houses without warrant and seize firearms. I don't know the full detail of the implications for that, but my instinct is that that's got to be wrong in a democracy where somebody's civil liberties are potentially threatened simply because they've elected to possess firearms. Also, I'm somewhat perturbed to see the suggestion again that there should be a special hotline for people to phone in with concerns about certificate holders. If that's not an invitation for abuse, then I really don't know what is. DEFRA has approved funding for the English Bluefin Tuna Research Programme. A green light for the chart 2023 scheme means sport fishing can restart in Cornwall on 25 vessels. Wales and Northern Ireland already have their chart programmes approved for 2023. A total of 40 charter vessels are authorised to fish for Atlantic bluefin tuna across the UK's western waters. Of course, it's not just chart skippers that benefit from chart going ahead. Um, down the southwest, we've got many businesses like pubs, restaurants, um, B&Bs, hotels, all now going to benefit from the anglers that are going to go to Cornwall and Devon to fish on our boats. MPs say a chief superintendent should be stripped of his role as the national police lead on policing trail hunting. Chief Superintendent Matt Longman, the National Police Council lead on hunting, gave a keynote speech at the launch of a campaign to ban trail hunting and claimed that the current law is not working. Charities, including the RSPCA and the League Against Cruel Sports, back the campaign, called Time for Change. During the launch, Chief Superintendent Longman, who is also commander of Plymouth Police, said that trail hunting is a smokescreen for fox hunting and blames the current law for a low numbers of prosecutions. MPs Greg Smith and James Gray condemn his intervention. They say he must be removed from his role as the most senior officer in charge of hunting after making biased statements. Lord Zach Goldsmith has resigned. He quit after refusing to apologise for criticising a Commons investigation into Boris Johnson. The Tory peer stepped down as a minister and used his resignation to attack Prime Minister Rishi Sunak for apathy on climate change. While a minister at DEFRA, Goldsmith backed a number of then Prime Minister Boris Johnson's animal rights policies. Basque is highlighting potential infringements of human rights. In evidence to the Scottish Parliament's Rural Affairs and Islands Committee, Basque's Head of Environmental Law and Evidence, Dr Marnie Lovejoy, described the Wildlife Management and Muirburn Scotland Bill as bad law because estates can lose licences on the mere suspicion of illegal activity, not convictions. As a result, the bill infringes the European Convention of Human Rights. She says the politicisation of grouse shooting will lead to further attempts to have licences suspended through snare and trap tampering. The licence can be potentially suspended for an unlimited amount of time, based on no wrongdoing whatsoever, simply based on a phone call to the police which triggers an official investigation, I've no doubt in my mind that this would be considered disproportionate. And I've no doubt in my mind that this will lead to court cases. MP Sir Bill Wiggin has attacked the proposal to ban the importing of hunting trophies into Britain as racist. The private member's bill by Henry Smith MP cleared its first hurdle in the House of Lords. The hunting trophies import prohibition bill may fail as it has limited parliamentary time. Amendments approved by the Lords could kill it. The North Herefordshire MP says it is wrong for communities that rely on hunting to be told how to run their countries by British politicians. Meanwhile, a delegation from southern African countries came to London to speak up for hunting as part of conservation and their efforts to look after their wildlife. 
Botswana ranks number one in Yale University's Species Protection Index, with the UK 125th. So hunting is key for us. We will always do hunting as long as we can see that the resource still, still allows us to do it. Scottish gamekeepers want the government to recognise predator control as essential conservation work. The Scottish Gamekeepers Association has started a petition which is calling on the control of predators such as foxes and crows to be legally recognised as conservation. It says the work benefits the survival of endangered species of ground nesting birds such as lapwings and curlews. Two shooters have won silver medals for Team GB in the European Games in Poland. Lucy Hall and Matt Coward Holly took the second spot in the trap mixed team in Krakow. In qualification, they got a score of 144 out of a possible 150. A shootout decided that Italy would go up against them in the gold medal match. After a tightly fought final, with the lead switching back and forward between the teams, the Italians came out on top with a final score of 6-4 against the British pair. Children have been enjoying learning about nature on moors across northern England. Around 3,000 youngsters took part in the Let's Learn More events at eight locations. It's English Upland's largest annual education event. It provides an opportunity for children to meet the people and organisations that help to protect the moorland landscapes and species. BASC, the North York Moors Moorland Organisation, Gamekeepers and more than 50 partner organisations create a range of activities. Hopefully we have a fantastic week from Nidderdale to the Dales to uh, Northern Pennines to Lancashire to the Peak District eight different venues, kids enjoying themselves, gamekeepers a centre of the attention, but making sure we work with those other partners as well. We want the kids to come out because the fresh air is very important to them. We also need them to understand that this managed landscape does have to have some do's and don'ts, and some simple rules that we expect them to follow. And finally, an angler has hooked one of the largest freshwater fish ever caught in the UK. Dan Wadey landed a colossal catfish weighing 127 pounds. He caught it using a dead bait during a catfish conservation group fishing at Chigborough Fisheries in Essex. He says he had a slow run and lifted into a dead weight, which then headed at speed for sanctuary behind an island. But with extra pressure, he turned the fish and it headed towards the bank. Dan says it was the fish of dreams and will be subject of many beer fueled conversations. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts.